this is fiery cross. Is that a lot of views? One year, ten Q, 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 Check. Q. This is Q, the last box that we're gonna watch something funny. As you, as you thinking for something funny, I could pog you. As it is, Island. this looks really interesting though. It's a little more than one square mile in size, and it's home to a Chinese military base. What is that? There's a ten thousand foot airstrip, an advanced radar station, a missile defense system, and about two hundred troops. But the strangest thing about Fiery Cross Island is that two years ago, it didn't exist. And neither did the six other Chinese military Gaming bases watch this. that have been built on man-made islands in the South China Sea. Why, this is you crazy. this satellite image from 2014, you can see huge Chinese ships collecting around remote reefs in the Spratly Islands, an archipelago in the South China Sea. In this image, these ships are rapidly pumping sand and rock up onto the reef. They're building islands. And less than a year later, the Chinese had seaports, air no bases, blood. and buildings on their new island, and the world had taken notice. We continue our look this morning at what China does not want you to see. The superpower is reclaiming land in seven spots in the South China Sea. Adding, on average, more than three and a half acres every day. See, with these islands, China's trying to lay claim to one of the most important Wait. areas of ocean in the world. They're spitting the sand? South China Sea. Onto the reefs to make an island? The South China Sea is incredibly rich in natural resources. 11 billion barrels of oil, 190 trillion cubic feet of natural gas, and 10% of the world's fisheries. Most importantly though, 30% of the world's shipping trade flows through here, to the booming population centers and economic Damn. markets of Southeast Asia. It's an extremely important body of water, and right now five countries lay claim to some part of it. Now, most countries base their claim off the UN law of the seas, which says a country's Chat, territorial last waters question. extend 200... Guys, what is this? What is they deciding that things that go in front of their country, they block it, and they're like, guys, guys, listen. Hey, we want to tax on this, dude. 10%. Now what? Miles off their shore. It's an water. called the Exclusive Economic Zone, or EEZ. Countries have exclusive rights to all the resources and trade in their EEZ. It's their sovereign territory. So for example, any oil that's found okay. within 200 miles off the coast of Vietnam belongs exclusively to Vietnam. But any area that isn't in an EEZ is regarded as international waters, and it falls under UN maritime law, which means everybody shares it. Now that's every cool. country in the South China Sea region uses this 200 mile EEZ threshold to determine its claims. Easy. All except China. China argues they have a historical claim to the South China Sea, dating back to naval expeditions in the 15th century. And they mark it using a really confusing border called the Nine Dash Line. Following World War II, Japan, who had dominated the entire region, lost all control of its okay, surrounding seas. Dude. China used the moment to claim the South China Sea by drawing this imprecise line on the map that encompassed 90% of the South China Sea. It became known as the Nine Dash Line. And when the UN established the 200 mile EEZ in 1973, China stuck to its own line, refusing to clarify its boundaries and ignoring claims by other countries. Now that brings us to the Spratly Islands. It's a remote, barely inhabited guys, cluster guys, of you islands. You know what it feels like? It feels like, the, like that guy at elementary school. No, it's my ball. Ugh. Hey, like, dude, fuck Currently off. Currently claimed by China, what is Vietnam, that, dude? the Philippines, and Malaysia. The Spratlys are both geographically and symbolically at the heart of the South China Sea. That's because any country that can claim the Spratly Islands can extend their EEZs to include them and gain exclusive rights to the surrounding territory. But it's really hard to legitimately claim uninhabited piles of sand. So a few nations have built small buildings and ports on their claimed islands and even stuck a few people there. <laughs> but China believes all of the Spratly Islands. What is that, dude? Okay, you can have your islands, dude, I guess. The Spratly Islands belong to them, which brings us back to why they're building islands there. Installing military bases on these new artificial islands took the dispute to a whole new level, showing how China is potentially willing to defend its claims with force. Now, this is about when the United States took notice. While the U.S. has no claim in the South China Sea, it is the world's lone superpower and uses its massive navy to defend international waters. Oh, okay. But China sees the U.S. presence in the area as an encroachment in their backyard. When a U.S. destroyer ship sailed just 12 miles off the shore of one of China's man-made islands in the Spratlys, China sent out their own destroyer and a patrol boat as a warning. 
China's building these islands in order to increase control around the surrounding waters, using a strategy that they've deemed the cabbage strategy, where they surround a contested island with as many ships as possible. In May of 2013, China sent several ships to Ayungan Shoal, which is just 105 nautical miles off the coast of the Philippines, well within that 200-mile EEZ. EEZ. The Philippines has eight soldiers stationed there. Like wrapping leaves around a cabbage, the Chinese sealed off the Philippines' access to Ayungan Shoal with fishing boats, surveillance ships, and Navy destroyers, creating a blockade so that the Filipinos can't receive shipments of food and supplies. By building their own man-made islands, China is essentially building naval bases. The more islands they have, the more ships they can support, and the more territory they can slowly take control of. And the Chinese cautiously use the cabbage strategy in the Spratly Islands, taking over contested territory, but in small steps, avoiding the possibility of igniting a bigger conflict. But the disputes are intensifying. Countries are now actively arresting trespassers in waters that they claim. And China could go a step further. Since 2015, they've threatened to declare an air identification zone above the South China Sea, declaring that all aircraft well, that fly it, through it would need Chinese permission. Now, publicly, China insists that their intentions are not militaristic, but their actions say otherwise, and it's heightening tensions in the region. Steve Bannon, who sits on the U.S. National Security Council and who is one of President Trump's closest advisors, is almost certain that the U.S. will go to war in the South China Sea. We're going to war in the South China Sea. I was a sailor there, a naval officer. We're going to war in the South China Sea in five to ten years, aren't we? There's no doubt about it. But for now, the disputes remain only in the legal and diplomatic realms that only occasionally break into minor clashes. In July 2016, the International Court at The Hague ruled in favor of the Philippines, who charged China with invading their rightful territory in the South China Sea. But China dismissed the ruling, and enforcement of the law doesn't seem likely, even from the U.S., who released a vague statement urging the two countries to clarify their claims and work together to resolve their disputes, which is another way of saying we don't really want to deal with this. Guys, 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 why is, why is the United States always part of everything, dude? Like, this is acro literally across the universe, dude. All the way, this is in between them, yo. In fact, as the conflict escalates and international courts get involved, hey guys, the U.S. Hey, is stuck in a tricky position. On one hand, oh, they do the not want to break anybody. a conflict with China. But on the other, they want China to stop bullying their allies in the region. Up until now, the U.S. has managed the situation by continuing to what patrol the... through the South China Sea. It's also likely that the U.S. would fly fighter jets above the sea if China actually does declare an air identification zone. These are symbolic but effective ways of keeping China in check while not getting too involved in the details of the conflict. So far, the disputes in the South China Sea have not become violent, but countries are starting to defend their claims just by increasing about... troop numbers, weaponizing their territory, and provoking each other. It's a complex situation that will continue to gain international attention, for better or for worse. Guys, that was actually really interesting, dude. Guys, I actually love this video, dude. I'm actually learning something, dude.